Black Knight, Curse of the Ebony Blade, issue number four. This is the penultimate issue of this incredibly weird book. This is really just said, yeah, Black Knight's a f***ed up character. Let's try to make something out of this. Cy Spurrier can spin gold out of stuff. And, you know, I was reading some comments on this issue and on this book, actually, and a lot of people don't like it. And I'm like, how can you not like this? It's the only time Black Knight has been relevant and mattered ever. It's the coolest Black Knight story ever told. So we open up this issue kind of where we left things off. And, you know, Dane drank from like the Ebony Chalice and he got like a weird vision of the future and the past and literally everything. It gave him the wisdom of in, uh, in the entire continuity bullshit that is the Black Knight and Camelot and everything. So him, Jax and Elsa are just kind of like headed out to go stop Mordred now. And we're like, how is this going to work? But the entire time, Dane is just kind of like out of it. And when we get into like the room with Red Cap and Mordred, Dane just kind of like passes out and he's like losing control of everything from like the amount of just like insanity coming from drinking from the chalice. And it's just a really interesting idea. So we see that like he's just lying on the ground, almost dead. And this is kind of like a this is like a flash forward for something that's going to happen to him later. And it's just really weird shit. And Dane's just freaking out and we see that he's just like talking to his listener app and it's like, just shut up, okay? There's a truth, there's a truth out there and I gotta reveal the truth and we don't say what the truth is yet, but we'll probably get to that in issue five. It's really, good. it's really good stuff. So we see that Mordred's like, okay, I guess that just leaves me and the redheaded chick. I don't have any beef with her. So I guess she's here for her own reason. She wants the bloodstone in Redcap's head. Now that he opened the portal for me to escape, yeah, screw it. I'll give her the, I'll give her the bloodstone. So Mordred tosses Elsa the blood stone and she's like okay thanks and we see Jax is like really your dad sucks you you're gonna let you're gonna bring him back and let this guy just do his own thing and Elsa's like yeah I am you're an orphan you wouldn't understand family shit so Elsa just leaves Elsa just leaves this book she just walks away and then we get like a really crazy fight happening between Dane and Mordred and this this is where I'm like yeah this is like the weirdest bullshit you can do with Black Knight because I keep saying it and I don't know why people don't get this and maybe you do or maybe you don't. Black Knight is way too complex and it's ridiculous. You wanted to make a knight on the Avengers. That's all you need to do. But adding all the other bullshit just kind of like made him this mess. So as Mordred and Black Knight are having this fight, we see the history of the Black Knights and basically we're seeing how just like kind of like the title of Black Knight and the Ebony Blade is like this thing that corrupts you. Of course, the book is called Curse of the Ebony Blade and it breaks you down. And the idea is that like Percy got screwed over like he was like this like stupid fool by the daytime that nobody respected and everybody treated like a dullard. And at night he did all these horrific, violent things and Merlin messed him up with that. And Merlin didn't do anything to stop it afterwards. So Merlin and Percy just kind of like ruined everything. But it wasn't because of Percy things got ruined. He was just like a pawn in the ever changing game. And it's like a huge wreck. And we see that Dane is just like losing control. There's like lasers and lights coming all out of him just not really sure how to fight Mordred here he's just freaking out and Mordred's just like playing into like the ego he's just like dude I get it man yeah you suck there's so much stupidity in here you were the fool you were the loser nobody respected you and we see that like yeah and like nobody respected Mordred either and this is why he wants to do it too so like, that makes sense to me too like they're pretty much like the two sides of the same coin where they're like the outcasts of Camelot where one was like the bastard son of its king and the other one was this monster that Camelot built that became this shameful existence and Merlin didn't fix any of it so it's like <laughs> it's like yeah Camelot screwed itself over which I really like because Marvel's Camelot is not like a Thurian legend Camelot it's this really messed up place that Thor could visit it's just like a really tragic place where like knights and wizards and shit lived but the people that ruled it like king arthur like merlin they really messed it up big time and they created a bunch of bad identities like these characters who are running about and they're destroying everything i love it i genuinely love it it's like yeah camelot really screwed the pooch on this one and it's really intense to see that so it's, it's just like okay awesome and we see that Jax is about to be killed by Mordred, but, you know, Dane's kind of controlling the power to step in and stop it. And, and we see that like, throughout the book, there was like this narration going on in Dane's head. Pretty much, I think it's, it's like the Black Knight identity talking to him about like, yeah, man, if only Percy didn't have that child when he was like, you know, there. 
If he didn't, like, get laid one night and had a kid, we could have stopped this entire thing from happening because the bloodline would have stopped. And then we get a page just seeing all of the descendants throughout history. You know, there's pirates and cowboys and a Nazi. And you're just like, yeah, the Black Knight, those who wield the blade, they all did crazy bad shit. All leading to Dane, this insane guy. And I love this because it's like, if Dane is a descendant, which we know he is, we look throughout history... All these people are wearing time-appropriate clothing, but Dane decided, nah, screw it, let's go back to Arthurian legend. I'm not gonna dress up like a pirate or like what's the modern equivalent of something you could do today, like a like a hipster. I'm not gonna dress like a hipster with the ebony blade. I'm gonna go back to the Arthurian legend to become the Black Knight himself. And I'm like, okay, Dane, that's dramatic. But basically, if Percy didn't have that kid, the the, the blade wouldn't matter. Everything would have stopped. And it's just really interesting. So after getting all these like people yelling at him in his own head, but like Merlin and Percy and Camelot and all this stuff, Dane is just like, no, I refuse. <laughs> and Mordred's like, what? What are you refusing? I don't understand. What are you refusing, dude? He's like, I refuse to be defined by my flaws. And he just like tosses the sword down and Mordred like stabs him. And that's where we saw where he was talking to Lister earlier. He's on his deathbed pretty much. And this time it looks like he's actually going to die for real. It's pretty intense shit. So Merlin pretty much gets all the weapons and he's going to use them to build the ultimate crown, the ebony crown, the most powerful thing in the world where he can take over Camelot and become its rightful ruler. And it's just like, yeah, man, crazy bullshit. I don't understand any of it, but I'm here for all of it. It's really great stuff. Just insane. We see that Jax wants to try to use the ebony blade to kill him. It doesn't really work, which of course it doesn't. This is like a lot of bullshit going on in this book. And we see that there's like a truth, like they, they tease like this truth being spoken by Dane at the end of this book that we don't really get into and what that's going to be. But it's just like, there's like the final confession of the Black Knight, which is like the truth of everything in the matter, which I'm curious what it could be. I think it might be something like maybe Percy is, you know, Mordred's true father or something like that. Just one of those big kind of things. But I'm like, this was really intense. It just said, yeah, Camelot, King Arthur, Merlin, they messed up. Dane went through the ringer here. Every like bad decision ever made by a Black Knight just went through his head. And we see why this character has been through so much crap because he's been just used his entire life. It's amazing. Genuinely amazing stuff. Genuinely frightening stuff. And I'm just like, this is what you do with Black Knight. You make him a weirdo. You do something intense, play with the lore, but make it scary and dark and just terrifying to see what could happen to this guy. I adore this immensely. It's so powerful and interesting. There is so much good about this book, and it's just something a lot of people should read. Cy Spurrier can spin gold. I don't understand why people don't like this. It's just a tale of toxic masculinity ruining an entire kingdom and just, like, destroying a bloodline for generation after generation and how you can never truly escape the curse of your family. It's brilliant. It's terrifying. It is the best that Black Knight has ever been. So, Black Knight, Curse of the Ebony Blade, issue number four. I am going to give an 8 out of 10. Now, thank you guys for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that good stuff. And I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.